We are back with part number two of Team Needs, and it's the NFC today. So let's get in and do it and start with the Washington Commanders. And, you know, Washington, they have, I think they've done a really impressive job. I, I So far, Adam Peters, I'm very impressed. So we shall see how things go. It's still too early, but I'm feeling some good vibes right now. Starting with the top needs, it's the quarterback being the number one. Like, in my eyes, you got to find the franchise quarterback. I think Marcus Mariota, you know, Jake State Farm. I mean, you, you got to go ahead and long term, you're going to need a quarterback there. I think that number two overall pick will be a quarterback. Maybe a trade down, you never know, and they still take away. That's an option, but more than likely, I do think they'll take a quarterback too. Tight end, also see as a pretty big need for the team. Now, maybe it's not, you know, I don't think this is like a first, second round, possibly maybe more like a third round, like at the top of the third round with this draft class. If it was last year's draft class, then absolutely. You look at someone like, like a Michael Mayer, or like a Sam LaPorta, et cetera. But again, in this class, maybe it's more of like that third round might be the ideal. A Jatavian Sanders, a Theo Johnson, et cetera. But Zach Ertz, you know, doesn't instill a ton of confidence at this point in his career. I mean, he's definitely somebody I, I like as the veteran presence. You got John Bates, good backup, but they definitely need some help there. Uh, left tackle, this is an obvious need. Cornelius Lucas, Braden Daniels. I mean, I do like Daniels quite a bit. Whether or not he's a tackle, whether or not he's a guard, that's going to be a big question there. But I do like the upside, what he brings to the table. Obviously, though, they still need an upgrade. And if you're going to bring in a rookie quarterback, you want to make sure that you're protecting the blind side. Not to mention Andrew Van, uh, uh, Andrew Wiley long term. And that's where I list this right tackle of the future. Could be a big time area if they move him inside the guard at some point. Edge rusher, still a need for me. I love what they brought in with Dorrance Armstrong. And uh, Cleveland Furl's a rotational player. Dante Fowler, scheme, familiarity. Dan Quinn, him and Darius Armstrong. I think Armstrong could be a 10 sack guy next year. Very possible. But that is still a need for me and one of the top priorities. In some areas that they need to upgrade, wide receiver. I, I think that they could add another third option. You know, Jamison Crowder right now is kind of like the number three. And what they're missing from that room is maybe a little bit of size. So that's kind of what I'm looking at to pair along with Scary Terry and, and Jahan Dotson. Right tackle, as we mentioned earlier, definitely in a long-term situation. Even if you, I mean, if you want to put Samuel Cosme at the right tackle position for the future, I guess that's an option, but I do like him at the right guard position quite a bit. Linebacker, future-wise, an area that they could look at, mainly because everybody's a free agent except for Frankie Louvu. So you got to think Bobby Wagner, one-year deal. You think Jameen Davis, one more year left on his contract. Maybe they don't bring him back. Who knows, right? It just depends on how he plays this year. I think that's going to be very key on that. Cornerback-wise, uh, this is another area that... Long term, Michael Davis brought in on a one year deal. Uh, that could be being a Benjamin, Benjamin St. Juice. That's, you know, long term. How do you look at all those things? Obviously, Emmanuel Forbes is locked in under contract. Quay uh, Martin in the slot. So maybe that number two outside cornerback could be taking a look at for the future. Safety. Another thing with free agents, Jeremy Chin. I love the fit with Dan Quinn. I think that's going to be an amazing one. However, he is a free agent next year. If he's unable to get an extension, what I, I, I think there could be some mutual interest there. And that's why I'm not super worried about it. Overall, though, they're going to use three safeties, Dan Quinn, and that experience. Even though they brought in more linebackers than I thought he would, I would still look at this because Jeremy Reeves a free agent, a quality special teamer, I might add. And then also Derek Forrest is a free agent. So really, it's Percy Butler who's the only guy that is currently under contract going into next season. Areas that they're good at, running back. Austin Eckler brought in on a super team-friendly deal. I get he's a little bit older, but geez louise, I didn't think he was going to be that cheap. So you now have him and Brian Robinson, exactly what they needed to pair along with Brian Robinson. Plus, you got Chris Rodriguez. I'm feeling good about it. Just a little bit of depth at the end of the draft or UDFA. Interior defense line looks good. And hopefully, Vidarian Mathis can kind of come along year number three. On to the New York Giants. My top needs, it starts with a wide receiver, right? They need a true number one wide receiver, what they're missing. And, and for me, they're within striking distance of one of those top guys. And I can get it if you want to put the quarterback position I'm a little higher on Daniel Jones than others. I do view it as an upgrade, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But wide receiver for me is that that's the area or a trade down at that number six overall pick that I'm currently looking at. D end is a huge need for this team as well. They really need somebody to pair along with Dexter Lawrence, sexy Dex on that interior defensive line as a D end. Right now, it's like DJ Davidson, it's uh, Raheem Noches Roaches. So, like, it's really thin. They need help. Maybe they bring somebody else in a free agency, but for the time being, that's a pretty big need for me. Corner is still a pretty big need as well. I mean, you got Deontay Banks, obviously locked in, Cordell Flott in the slot, but who's going to be that outside number two guy? 
Do we feel confident about Trey Hawkins? Eh, do we feel confident about Aaron Robinson? Eh, you know, those are question marks for me. So that's why I do list this as kind of like a top priority scenario here. Maybe bring in a free agent. Like that would be ideal if they could get, you know, lure one of those top free agents like a Stephon Gilmore in here. I just don't know if he's going to, it depends, right? He's probably going to want to go to a team that is in a win now mode. On to some tier two needs slash, you know, still definitely first round possibilities. Quarterback, if one of those quarterbacks falls to you, then I'm all down for it. It's just, Personally, you got Drew Locke as a backup, so we're good to go. I'm just saying, look, I think that this is setting up to be a next year position, especially when you get that number one wide receiver, hopefully, and you start continuing to build this roster. They're doing a good job of it. I'm not saying that they're not in win now mode by getting Brian Burns. However, I still think that next year is really setting it up for me to get a quarterback, possibly. So I don't know. We'll see how things shake up there in the draft. Running back, you got Eric Gray. You got uh, uh, Devin Singletary coming in. This could be an up upgrade, especially for the future. So that is something that keep an eye on, Singletary on a short-term deal. Tight end, another area where Darren Waller is already kind of experimenting with retirement. I don't know. That's kind of a weird way to put it. Experimenting or contemplating retirement. So I think there's a good chance either this year or next year he ends up retiring, probably next year. And that's why I think, you know, long term with Daniel Bellinger, at least finding a compliment there. Not a huge priority, though, like early need in this draft. Left guard. At least left guard here, maybe not top need. Mainly, I mean, they did bring in Aaron Stenny, who's a quality backup and, and certainly could play. You got Joshua Zuda, who could compete at that left guard position. My view on it is you move Evan Neal inside the left guard, have Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle. I don't know. You can rotate. You can and figure some things out. I still think this is probably a draft need, a relatively early draft need, and I could see them spending one of the, you know, spending that second round pick on it, even possibly. But for the time being, there's some possibilities. I feel like they've got five starters. It's just maybe can they work Evan Neal over that left guard position and figure that out. So that's kind of my view on this. Other than that, though, John Michael Schmitz, you got Alston Schlotman. I love Schlotman's name as a backup center. You got John Runyon in there as well, who they just recently got. Linebacker, an area long term, you could look at upgrading Micah McFadden. Well, I like my IU. Let's go. You know, I'm an IU homer. I went and graduated IU degree, but I, I think that IUPY. But I went and I'd say to, uh, Micah McFadden and Bobby Okereke really saw a one-two punch. Both are under contracts next year, and then safety wise, you, you know, Jason Pinnock's locked in. I feel good about that, but. You know, Dane Belton has yet to really show a ton as a starter. You got Javaris Owens as a developmental guy, special teamer. And then you bring in Jalen Mills on a short-term deal. So that is something where long-term, you're going to need some more safety help, if nothing else. And then finally, areas that they are good at. Edge rusher, let's go. Brian Burns, JT, Aziz Ojolari. I'm feeling really good about the edge group for the Giants. Onto the Philadelphia Flyers. No, I'm just kidding. Eagles. But my top needs for the Eagles start with the slot cornerback position just upgrades in general in the secondary and maybe Vic Fangio can get the best out of James Bradbury slash Darius Slay you got a lot of depth behind this is just it's so difficult to project guys like Josh Jobs, Eli Ricks, Keely Ringo, Mario Goodrich, Isaiah Rogers like it's really tough, right? Those are things that like I would need to be in the locker room to really understand in the coaching staff meetings and things like that to really understand what kind of clarity they have on the current secondary. They didn't go out and spend big money, which I don't think they need to. They need to be looking at this for the future in the draft. But that is definitely the toughest area for me to be projecting. I just view it as a need from watching the games this past year. Their secondary was so bad. On to some upgrade areas. Slot receiver, right? You bring in Devontae Parker. I mean, you got Britton Covey, but still. like I think that they could add a third wide receiver to go along with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Overall, it's not maybe the top priority, but I would definitely be looking at it. And I think it's an area they could upgrade depending on who's on the board. Right guard slash swing tackle, I think is something that they could look at. And maybe someone like a Kingsley Sulmate would be ideal if you could get him in one of your second round picks or a developmental right tackle for the future that can play guard or at least compete there with Tyler Steen, I am not sold on Steen from the you know film I watched in the Cowboys game. So it's like, it's tough, okay? It is really, really tough. So we're going to kind of be projecting that a little bit. I know that you got one of the best in the business and Jeff Stoutland. And when he says things, it, you know, it means stuff. But for the time being, I'm very, very cautious on that. So we shall see about Tyler Steen at the right guard position. There is a little bit of hold on, hold up, and see on that moment. So at least adding some competition in my view. Edge-wise, you got to think Hassan Reddick might be on the move. Josh Sweat could even be on the move. Who knows? Brandon Graham going into the final year. And he's, I think, going to retire 
half of the season. So you figure on, yes, you do bring in Bryce Huff, Huff, and I'll puff you and I'll blow your house down from the J-E-T-S, Jet, 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 no. But uh, anyway, I'm really excited for him. I think he's going to ball out. But long term, they could use another outside guy if Nolan, you know, to at least pair along with uh, Nolan Smith as a backup slash somebody that can rotate in as that third dude. And D end is also a possibility that they could look at somewhere in the mid round range for the future, possibly right into your defensive line, because. You got to think Milton Williams going into a contract year. Maybe he gets paid. We'll see how it depends. He looks this year. He's going to definitely get an opportunity to play a lot more reps with Fletcher Cox now gone and retired. But um, you you look at that for the future to pair along with Jordan Davis, at least in some depth and Jalen Carter for the future. Because also Marlon Tui Pelosi is a free agent in a lot of their interior. More Ojimo. I, I like him a lot. I will say I think he's a little underrated. Was their last pick last year. Linebacker wise, you feel good about it, at least right now with Devin White and Nicobe Dean, you got Oren Burks, a little sneaky there. Zach Bond's a nice little sign. He's actually going to be like that hybrid edge rusher that drops into coverage and Vic Fangio scheme. So I like that fit actually a lot. I thought that was a sneaky signing, but uh, linebacker for the future slash, you know, at least competition could be a, a possible upgrade there. Cornerback. This is, you know, I list that, you know, kind of with slot cornerback. How do you feel outside cornerback? Even if Slay and Bradbury are kind of like tough. You you actually lose more money if you cut them. Now you can post June first it and just kind of get them off the books if you really want to. But it's it's just a difficult scenario as we talked about earlier. Safety, free safety, uh, because Reed Blankenship is going to a contract year. I wouldn't imagine he'd be super expensive or nothing like that. But that could be an area that at least they have some depth. Sidney Brown working in rotation with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson as he works to get fully healthy. On the areas that they are good at obviously quarterback you got Kenny Pickett as backup now and to go along with Jalen Hurts you're, you're locked in there running back Saquon Barkley I'm so excited to watch Saquon Barkley dude it's gonna be crazy and then of course Kenneth Gainwell tight end you got Grant Calcaterra as a nice backup to Dallas Goddard tackle I feel good about it you know you got Lane Train you got um you know Jordan Mataala you got Fred Johnson kind of as a swing man love her from Clark too could work in as their swing tackle but that's you know also when I mix in with earlier with a swing tackle slash swing right guard somebody there in that draft I think they could look at left guard and center both locked in with Dickerson and Jurgen. how about them Cowboys but we are on to the Dallas Cowboys and my top needs running back definitely could add somebody in here I mean who knows maybe a reunion with Zeke wouldn't be a bad idea but that's kind of what they're missing right they're missing a Zeke they're missing somebody with some more power on some short yard you know, between the tackles runner. And I will say, I mean, I like Rigo Dowdle. He showed a lot of explosiveness out of the backfield. So I definitely see him as a, a role player and somebody that could be on to a bigger workload. Same thing with Deuce Vaughn. I love Deuce. He's loose. And then besides that, though, you got Malik Davis, Snoop Connor, who knows. And then interior offensive line, like left guard slash center. Brooke Hoffman and also TJ Bass definitely stepped up when they needed to during the season for injuries. However, I would still be looking at that. I think this is where they probably end up spending their first round pick is on the offensive line. And I mean, wouldn't exclude a tackle, right? And you could keep Tyler Smith at left guard. I definitely think that's a possibility. And then you have competition between Bass and Hoffman at the center position. Or you could always draft somebody later too or bring in a free agent, et cetera. But yeah, I mean, if an Amarius Mims follows you or JC Latham, I'm, that's the route I'm going. And I'll keep Tyler Smith out. Oh, dude. Oh, if one of those guys falls, oh my goodness, that would be a crazy combo next to Tyler Smith. That'd be so much power. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yes, those are all options on the table. Graham Barton, a JPJ, etc. Very much in play at that first overall pick. Now, areas that long-term, you know, free agents, mid-tier, quarterback, I list it. I think Dak Prescott will get an extension. I'm a believer in Dak. I think he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. That's my view on it. I think he's worth the extension, so that's what I would do. But everybody is a free agent next year, so I have to list this for the time being. Wide receiver, you know, long-term running mate with C.D. Lamb. Definitely could be looked at. Where's the number three right now with Brandon Cooks? Is the only other, I mean, you got Jalen Tolbert, but, you know, country and Torben. They need somebody else in there. Edge rusher, safely losing after Dorrance Armstrong will be a tough loss. You got Sam Williams, and I think he's ready to start stepping in, you know, as long as we can keep coming of those, you know, mind-boggling mistakes, penalties off the, you know, off the field. He definitely has a lot of potential there. I mean, he's got crazy speed, man, to, you know, get you around with that lateral agility and, and, and whatnot. But uh, we'll see, right? I think he's going to definitely be called upon heavily this year now with him with Armstrong gone. And Law is going into the last year of his contract. So who's going to be that long-term guy? Hopefully Sam Williams, but I do think they could add some depth in there into your defensive line this is an area where i would like them to bring in like a free agent but now the you know mozzie smith year two hopefully he gets a little bit stronger again and build back up and you pair him along with osa digazua on that interior front 
Um, still an area that they could look at uh, adding to with Chauncey Golson, more of an undersized situational player on the interior. And Mike Zimmer's probably going to want some, you know, some heft in there. Uh, linebacker, another area that they need to add at least some competition here with Overshone going into year two, getting healthy. Uh, you bring in Eric Kendricks, that experience with Zimmer, which is nice. It'll, it'll definitely help. And then Damone Clark. I still believe in Damone Clark. I get it. There were some pains and there's some struggles, but I still see it's just he's got to get a little more physical. He's got the physicality. I know he does. It's just he hasn't quite gotten it yet. Uh, slot corner for the future. Jordan Lewis is a free agent in 2025. Tight end are areas that they're good at. Tight end, I feel confident they're in a really good spot. You got Luke Schoonmaker is a backup behind Jake Ferguson. And then also you got Peyton Hendershot. Safety-wise, I also feel good about this with Wilson, Hook, and then also Mukwama. Uh, Mugwama, great name as well, but anyway, I feel good about their safety room. And also, Marquise Bell might end up transitioning to a safety position. I could see him being a breakout, too, at the safety spot. On to the Chicago Bears, where we finally got clearance. We finally got clarity. Who's going to be the quarterback going into 2024? It's going to be Tyson Bajan. <laughs> or, oh, maybe it's going to be Brett Rippon. No, it's going to be Caleb Williams. We know that. That's an obvious one. Top need. Edge rusher-wise, another need. I think that's going to be pick number nine, especially going and getting Keenan Allen now. And while I like Demarcus Walker, he's a you know, nice player, and I think he can rotate inside and out, too. That versatility is nice. I expect them to draft an edge at number nine. Or, you know, who knows? There's, there's a lot on the table. I still think an edge rusher is very much in the play early in the draft for them. Getting a Jared Verse, a Dallas Turner, a Leatu Latu would be great to pair along with Montez Sweat. Other areas to look at tier two, wide receiver, still an option, right? You got Keenan Allen, you got DJ Moore, Tyler Scott, can he step up and be that number three? I think so. I don't, I don't see why not. You got Valence Jones as, you know, special teams and, and uh, as a backup there. But overall, I, I think that receiver becomes much less of a need. It could still be an area you add to somewhere in the mid rounds. Left tackle, possibly, but I, I like Braxton Jones. I do list it here. You got Larry Borum, Jay Kerm as swing tackles. I, I'm confident in Braxton Jones. But it could be an option if somebody falls to you at number nine that you like. But that is definitely just a possibility. You know, if, if it's a can't miss, you know, type of player, Joe Walt falls to you at nine, then I would take him. But for the most part, I don't see this being a need this season, at least. Interior is more, I'm actually my priority for the offensive line right now. And I would say between guard for the future slash center, because guard wise, first off, Jenkins is going to a contract year and he's had trouble with injuries. So if he has more injury issues, then they may not look to re-sign him. I think that's very much a possibility. So that left guard position long-term could be in flux, at least need some depth right in the draft. I think that's a real option. Center Col Coleman Shelton. I like him. I think he's a starting center in the NFL. I don't think he's an elite center. I do think that they need to draft somebody and develop but this doesn't mean that they have to go at it with that third round pick either or, you know, even, you know, trade down to the first and get a center there. I think that they could say to them, so say, look, let's go fourth, fifth, sixth round. Let's try to find a developmental guy and, and go that route. Uh, areas that they're good at running back, DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson. Feel like they're good. Khalil Shakir or Khalil Herbert, pardon me, is is still in a contract this year. Now he's a free agent next year, but they're in a really good spot at the running back position. Tight end, feel good about that. Now you got Gerald Everett on two year contract with Cole Clement into your defensive line. It's solid, right? I think they're in a good spot. Obviously, Demarcus Walker, if you draft an edge rusher, can also rush on, on sub packages. But Gervin Dexter, Zach Pickens, I'm, I'm, I'm strong. I, I feel good about that. And Andrew Billens has a good run defender, one tech. And then linebacker, feel good about this. You got Noah Sewell in the wings. You got Jack Sanborn as a backup. So you're in a good spot with Edwards and then also Edmonds. And then cornerback, feel good about this. Terrell Smith is a fourth corner. I like that, what he showed. So if he can get healthy between Gordon, Stevens, I don't even feel really good. Obviously, Jalen Johnson back. So you're locked in at the cornerback spot. Safety was also feel good about this. Um, bringing Kevin Byard on a two year deal and, and he'll be that free safety. You got Jaquan Brisker as the box. So overall, good, good shape there. And Jonathan Owens as a backup. On to the Detroit Lions. And top needs for me as we get to the roar. It starts with the roar off the edge. They need some more pass rush. They do bring in Marcus Davenport. He's going to help. But, you know, injury questions, of course, a big thing there in long term. John Kaminsky is more of a base 4-3 end. They can work on the inside when they're in their like 3-4 looks. So I would still be looking to add edge in here. I do think this is still relatively an early need in the draft to go along with Aiden Hutchinson for the future, getting some more juice. And then on some other areas that they could upgrading slash future free agents quarterback. I just listed because Jared Goff is a free agent going into next year. I do think an extension will be worked out. How much you pay him? That's going to be a good question, but that is something we have to consider here. You got Hannon Hooker as a developmental piece. Wide receiver. 
Also think Amon Ross St. Brown is going to get an, he's going to get an extension. It's just a matter of time. So we'll see when that happens. But him and JMO are, would be under contract in that case scenario. And you have figure on they make it. Donovan Peoples Jones signed up on a one year deal. And besides that, you got Khalif Raymond. You got to think about long term as well. So maybe finding a number three for the future could be an option in the mid round range. Tackle slash guard is definitely something they need to start prioritizing. You got to think long term. Taylor Decker is a free agent in 2025 slash Kevin Zeidler on a one year deal. So maybe you bring somebody in like a Kingsley Suomatea that can play guard early on and be a long term tackle for you. I wouldn't mind that. Panay Sewell probably will be the left tackle of the future, but that is something you still could use a right tackle of the future slash right guard of the future. DT, I list it mainly because, I mean, Ali McNeil is a free agent next year. He should get an extension. They got plenty of money to do so. And I would imagine that that get work, gets worked out sooner rather than later. And Reader is under contract for a few years. And that's a fun core. I do like that. They could still use a little bit more depth other than Broderick Martin on the interior. And Levi Unzerike, we'll see if he gets an extension or not. But that is something, you know, where it's going to come down to injuries and stuff like that. So they could still use maybe that situational pass for sure on the interior front. I mean, Kaminsky can also move inside, but he's under the last year of his deal. And then cornerback, definitely an area they still need to look at upgrading for sure. You bring in Carlton Davis and he's going to be a great fit for Aaron Glenn's defense. I love that move to get him. Now he's under contract for one more year. Whether or not an extension is worked out is going to be coming down to how he plays this year. So those all things considering, he can be that number one press man, you know, on an island corner that I think they're going to be looking for and fit the scheme of what they want to do a lot. And then Cameron Sutton, though, I do think he'll get probably released after the season. That's something to at least consider just because I don't know if he fits their scheme exactly from what they're going to want. You know, he's more of an off man, off zone corner at this point in his career. He's a good corner. It's just more of an off coverage guy. We'll see if Emmanuel Mosley can get healthy and play a player for them and, and obviously a slot you're good to go but long term finding that number two is still very much in play for them early in the draft safety if any Melifonwu, while he played really well at the end of the season he's had some injury concerns throughout his career so at least getting some depth in there to go along with kirby joseph i think is a must priority do in this draft and then going on some areas that they're in good shape running back obviously Monty and and gibbs you're locked and loaded and then tight end with Wright coming back for a season and, and Sam Laporta potty locked and go. And then linebacker, you should be good at Captain Jack and Alex Anzalone. And Eric Barnes is going to a free agency uh, sort of contract, but you still have Malcolm Rod under the deal. On to the Green Bay Packers and my top needs, linebacker. First and foremost, they got to add some more linebacker depth. Jeff Halfley, I'm sure, is going to want at least three capable linebackers in his rotation. You got Isaiah McDuffie, you got Quay Walker. But besides that, you're definitely going to have to add in the draft. Safety, another area they're still going to need. You got Xavier McKinney, but who's going to be that number two guy right now? Anthony Johnson, maybe, but they're going to need to lead add competition. On to some other areas, tackle, right? Offensive line, competition, versatility. That's what Brian Gutekunst always seems to draft on his offense with his offensive alignment. So I expect the same. Somebody that can play any position called upon. Anything about future-wise, Josh Myers going into a contract year. Maybe at least adding some competition for Sean Ryan early on too. So those are all possibilities on their offensive line. Interior defensive line. Kenny Clark is going to do a contract here. And while you got some guys in Carl Brooks and Coley Wooden, Wooden's more of a guy who can also rush on the outside. So can Carl Brooks. But that could be an area that they look to add to to go along with Devontae Wyatt for the future. You got TJ Slayton. It's kind of like that nose tackle space heater. Cornerback. Another area that it's kind of like you got Carrington Valentine, you got Eric Stokes competing for that other outside cornerback position. Keyshawn Nixon is back as your slot slash kick return special teamer. And then Jai Alexander, of course. But who's going to be that number two corner? Definitely could add in the draft at least some more competition. Areas that they're good at, quarterback, or at least it looks like it with Jordan Love, who played phenomenal, played like one of the best quarterbacks in the league towards the end of the season. Running back, you got Josh Jacobs. I'm super excited to see Josh Jacobs. I'm glad they brought A.J. Dillon back. Dude is green, bleeds green, bay, wide receiver, good shape here. Another area that I guess this wouldn't, you know what, it would just imagine if they draft a receiver in the first round when nobody expects it. That's probably what they'll do. So just keep an eye out on that. But nonetheless, they are in a really good spot. Tight end, same thing with Kraft and Musgrave. Edge rusher wise, Gudukuns will probably go after an edge, but this is like a BPA approach, right? You've got your guys. You got Preston Smith, you got Rashawn Gary, you got Lucas Van Ness, the locked Van Ness monster, and Kingsley Nagbari, when he gets back fully healthy, will be a really, he's a good rotational player. Skull, skull, skull. On to the Minnesota Vikings. And my top needs quarterback. 
first and foremost. Sam Donald, is he the answer? I don't know. We'll see. You got Nick Mullins. What is it? You got Jaron Hall. But I expect them to be adding to this quarterback position in the draft. D end, also a pretty big need for me on the defensive interior, should I say, or defensive end, go along with Harrison Phillips, be the pass rush type. They brought in some guys, right? They brought in Jerry Tillery, Jonathan Bullard, John, Jonah Williams, you know, Jihad Ward, you got Jaquil and Roy. But yeah, I think that this is an area they still need to add that true pass rushing type next to next to Harrison Phillips for the future. And then on to some other areas that they're going to need to upgrade running back, right? You got Aaron Jones, right? He's, he's around and he's good running back, of course. But at this point in his career, you probably cannot rely on him being a workhorse running back. He should be more of a situational player. And Ty Chandler is not bad or anything like that. However, I still feel like they're missing that power element in this running back room. Slot wide receiver is another area that they could look on this offense line. You got Brandon Powell. You got Trent Sherfield as some guys to keep an eye out on. And Brandon Powell is definitely not bad. Wasn't, wasn't terrible for them last season behind KJ Osborne. But that is something you could also still look at in the draft. That's not an early need, though. That's like a mid to late round type of throw. But definitely something they could look at upgrading. Left guard slash center. Left guard right now is a huge void. I do think Dalton Reisner will be back. It's too early to tell on that, but I think there's a really good chance Reisner ends up coming back. And if he does, then this is not that big of a need, depending on how long of an extension that is. No matter what, though, Garrett Bradbury, you could try to find a little bit of a developmental piece behind him. You lost Austin Schlotman as your backup, so I think that center could definitely be an option with that left guard position, because currently you just got like Dan Feeney and and uh, what Henry Boyd, Bird. So yeah, they need a little bit more help on that interior right now to go along with that Ingram. Edge rusher, still a need, still an area upgrade, right? You got Van Ginkel, you bring in Jonathan Grenard, both really good options. But besides that, it's like Pat Jones and you need more, more depth early on right now, at least. And then cornerback, another area that could be upgraded, Byron Murphy going into a contract year. You got some youth, right? You got Makai Blockman, you got a Caleb Evans. They bring in Shaquem Griffin. So like you got some competitive starters, possibly. This is still an area that it just depends on who is on the board. I wouldn't be shocked if they ended up upgrading. Safety, long-term Harrison Smith. An option, right? Lewis Seen, maybe your hope is that he can be the guy. Josh Mattelis is a free agent. Now he plays nickel, so he should be good there. But he's like a hybrid type of player. And then, obviously, you got Cameron Bynum, being, who's also a free agent. You should give him an extension. But that's, you know, one of the reasons why I listed. That's not as big of a need, mainly because I think Bynum will be back. And there's a good chance that, hopefully, Seen, or, you know, you sign somebody there and did nothing else. On to some areas that they're good at. Tight end, TJ Hawkinson. You got Munt, too, as a backup for right now. Not too worried about that. Hawkinson under contract. Tackle, good to go with Brian O'Neill and Christian Darasaw. Just maybe a swing tackle for the future could be an option for them. On to the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds. Top needs. Edge rusher. That's the pick at number eight. I'll just say that right now. Pretty much. I mean, it seems like it. And for good reason. They get one of those top three edge rushers. I feel great about that. Need some more help behind Arnold Abikitti and Leonard Lorenzo Carter on some other areas of upgrade. Wide receiver. Still, I mean, you got Rondell Moore. I think they've got their start. Like, I feel confident with Mooney, Rondell Moore, and obviously Drake London. You got Kyle Pitts. They need another guy, though, maybe for the future with Rondell Moore being a free agent next year if he's if they're unable to work out an extension. Maybe that third guy. Not a huge need, especially with Pitts. And we saw with Kirk Cousins, like he had two good receivers and a great tight end. And that was plenty enough for Cousins to be able to do what he needed to do. And he can elevate some of those other, you know, the receivers like uh, Ray Ray McLeod. I mean, he's more of a special teamer, Cordell Hodge, etc. But they can work out, and I feel like it's not that big of a priority, but it could be something you think about and, and draft in that mid round range, depending on who is available. Center, I, I think Drew Dolman should get an extension. I like him. Yes, he's going to have some trouble for some of those more, you know, tough nose tackle types. But overall, he's improved steadily and he's a solid center. But he is a free agent next year. So that could be something if you're not, you know, thrilled about Gwen as a backup there, nothing else. Right tackle. This is where I feel a little bit more inclined to try to upgrade long term. Kayla McGarry is cuttable next season. So this is an option where maybe you draft a Blake Fisher on day two or you draft a Christian Jones, et cetera, as a developmental piece and can be a long term right tackle. Who knows? And maybe even just tackle in general. Jake Matthews getting a little bit older now. He is still under contract, not cuttable next year. And he's still playing at a high level too. Interior defensive line, a nose tackle type wouldn't be bad. And that way, Anyamata and, and Grady Jarrett can kind of do what they do best, getting after the quarterback. And Zach Harrison for the future there as a D-end. You got to take one Graham, who's not bad as a rotational player. But like I talked about, they could still kind of use that nose tackle type for sure on the interior. Or just more interior defensive line, getting a little bit younger. Cornerback also list. 
this could be an upgrade, right? And, and I like Clark Phillips, and I think he'll be great in Raheem Morris' scheme. I think if there's any place for Phillips to thrive, it's going to be under Morris. I think that's exactly the fit. And you got your size with AJ Terrell. You got D. Alford in the slot. You got Mike Hughes, who can play outside and slot. So I feel like they've got a nice group of three. It's not an elite group. Well, AJ Terrell, I mean, that's pretty dang good. You could upgrade that number two spot. But as I was saying, I think you give Clark Phillips that chance. Maybe add somebody, though, in the mid-round range. Areas that they're good at. Quarterback, Kirk Cousins. You got Taylor Heineke as a backup. You're locked in there for at least two years under Kirk Cousins' guarantees. Running back, good to go. Bijan Dijon, Tyler Algier. Tight end, Kyle, Kyle Pitts. Guard, feel confident, right? You're in a good spot here. So with Bergeron and Lindstrom. Linebacker, feel confident between the hitman, Nate Landman, one of my favorite linebackers coming out of Colorado, dude, with a stud. You got Troy Anderson, Charlotte to develop, and then obviously Caden Ellis, safety. Also feel like Demeco Helms and also Jesse Bates. Now, Richie Grant is a free agent next year, so that's an option as a third safety for them. You can draft that late. Though. The New Orleans Saints, and my top needs, offensive line. They need that left guard slash left tackle position figured out. And this comes down to how do you feel about Trevor Penning? James Hurst, a quality swing man. I would love him as your sixth offensive lineman. As a starter, he definitely could be worse. However, as I talk about right now, filling in that left guard position, I would imagine, need to try to upgrade, think about that. So between one of those positions, maybe move Penning inside the guard and just let him be a, a butt kicker there. And then you draft your Amarius Mims, your Brass, your, you know, your JC Latham, etc. Olu Fashana would be great if he falls to you. Get one of those guys that can protect Derek Carr's blind side for the future quarterback here. Uh, other areas, quarterback. Could be an area I don't see them going after it. They, you know, spent a mid-round pick on Jake Heener last year. You got Taysom Hill as a backup too. You know, playing any position. Derek Carr under contract. They also moved some money into the future, so I think he's going to be around for at least one more season, probably two. Wide receiver could add to this room. I think they could really use a red zone threat to kind of mitigate Derek Carr's weaknesses, right? A Keon Coleman would be a dream, in my opinion, for this team. Like, if you could get him, I don't think he's going to fall the second. He shouldn't fall the second round, but who knows, right? I, you never know in the draft. Tight end, option for the future, because Juwan Johnson going, you know, they're getting into contract years here. They're getting expensive. Taysom Hill, We'll see how much or longer he's going to be around. And the contract makes it tough. But next year, I believe he's cuttable. You got a lot of free agents. So Foster Moreau heading into the next season. Right tackle of the future. Thinking Ryan Ramchek with the injuries, the knee. If those things continue to linger, that's another reason why I wouldn't be afraid to draft the tackle with that first pick. If nothing else, he can play you know, one of those guard positions or, you know, figure it out with Penning and then, you know, right tackle. If injuries come arise, you need somebody who's versatile, who probably ideally play left or right tackle. A uh, defensive tackle. Also an area that they could look at long term, Karan Sanders, Kalan Sanders, a guy that definitely have to think about going into a contract year. And then next to, you know, Brian Brzee and more rotation with Nathan Shepard as that third, second possible guy. Linebacker in area long term, even though they did restructure, give an extension kind of to Demario Davis, who's getting a little bit older now, what, 35, 36? Pete Warner going to a contract year, so those are all reasons to look at that. Cornerback Paulson Debo is going to a contract year, and there's been a lot of trade rumors with Marshawn Lattimore, so I also have to list it for that reason, too. You get a Latte Taylor in the slot and feel good about that, but definitely an option for them. Other areas that they're good at, running back uh, for now, right? I think that. You have to definitely lean on Kendra Miller, and I I feel like he should get more reps next season. Jamal Williams is tough to cut right now. Even heading into next year, I don't know if it's worth it. Alvin Kamara, though, I do think this will be his last season. So you could draft somebody late as a receiving developmental back. I, I think that could be an option for them. Center slash right guard's good to go with McCoy and Ruiz. And then edge rusher, they brought in, uh, you know, this is an interesting one, man. But, I mean, Chase Young. Hopefully, we'll be healthy and, and ready to go for them. But I think between you you got Carl Grenderson, who's under contract, and you still have um, Cameron Jordan under contract. You've got Isaiah Foskey. Maybe he can hopefully develop. Peyton Turner's got to stay healthy. Like, they've got a lot of guys. It just hasn't worked out at this moment, other than Grenderson. And Cameron Jordan's just getting a little bit older, of course. So there's something there. Safety. Other area that I don't think that big of a need. I think you get Howden and, and, and Matthews on a reworked deal. So overall, they're in a pretty good spot. On to the Bucks, Tampa Bay. And my top needs for the Bucks are left guard. You need to go ahead and upgrade there. You bring in Suapata, 
who's definitely not bad. I mean, he was a really nice swing player for the Eagles, but it maybe gets his opportunity to start here and prove it for sure. He's in the prime of his career, so I definitely think there's something there, but I would still be looking at adding somebody in here into that rotation. If nothing else, a day two type of pick for the team at center slash left guard that gives you that versatility, I think would be really nice. Robert Hainsey as well, you could look at as a possible upgrade. Now, I still think he's got a lot of potential at the center position. Edge rush, big need here, all right? I mean, you got to get another edge rusher. Yaya Diaby, Joe Tryon, Shainka. Like, those guys can be your starters, but, you know, Chop Robinson at the end of the draft, at the end of the first round, would be a really nice add, and that would be a lot of speed off the edge with Yaya and Chop. So keep an eye on something like that. Definitely could add to this rotation after letting go Shaquille Barrett. Corner, still in the area at number two, like Zion McCollum. Do you feel confident that he can end up taking that Carlton Davis role? He did play way better this season. I was originally worried watching him last year. Like, you know, well, technically 2022, but uh, yeah, it's already 2024. But anyway, yeah, that's something where you know, a little hesitant. You got Christian Izian in the slot. Maybe you could add a little more competition, but Izian, Izian played well. And you got Jamel Dean under contracts here. You're okay on that one spot, but definitely could look at a number two, possibly. Other areas of future upgrades or future free agents, should I say? Wide receiver, that number three spot. Trey Palmer, I, you know, I feel confident he could be a, a solid number three, number four guy. And you got Devin Tompkins as a a situation or as a special teamer. You got Rakim Jarrett as a developmental piece. As I was saying, I still think this could be an area that they look to spend a mid-round pick or even an earlier pick on, possibly on who's on the board, right? There might be a good value there. Who knows? Maybe Brian Thomas Falls or an A.D. Mitchell, et cetera, and they can't pass up on that because Chris Godwin is a free agent in 2025. Running back, looking at a power back, somebody that's between the tackles. That's something I think that they're missing. I, lo I mean, I love Rashad White. I think his receiving skills are really, really good. But who's going to be that number two, you know, between the tackles runner? And I would love an Audric estimate a combo this, right? I think that'd be really fun. Centers, I, I talked about earlier with Robert Hainsey, possibly, right, going in a contract year. Linebacker, I believe in Savachier Dennis and KJ Britt. Now, Britt is going into a contract year. And Levante David, obviously a one-year deal and getting older now, maybe he retires. So that's still an area for me. Even if you feel confident with Savachier Dennis and KJ Bread, I still think they need to add, if nothing else, some mid-round pick at some depth. And then areas I feel really good about. Quarterback. Now, I mean, they could draft a Spencer Rattler. It wouldn't shock me if they did that. Baker Mayfield's contract by no means is a guaranteed thing the long term. It's kind of like a one, two-year, one-and-a-half type of thing. But overall... They could add somebody behind Kyle Trask slash John Walford, who's the IQ man in the room, basically. But maybe you can compete for that number two spot. Spencer Rattler would be an option. So, you know, interesting. Not that big a high priority. Tight end, Clay Auden and Payne Durham. Feel confident about that room for the future. Left tackle, you know, Tristan Wirfs, seamless transition. Right guard slash right tackle between Mock and Luke, uh, Luke Godick looked good there. And then on the interior, which looks really good, you got Vita Bea, you got Gre uh, Greg Gaines as the backup nose, and then you got your DNs, you got your Kalija Kansi, and you got Logan Hall, so I feel confident there. Maybe a little bit of depth for the future, but that's a late pick, if nothing else. Safety, I feel really strong about this too. Jordan Whitehead and Antonio Winfield, that's a nice combo. And, and it's good to have Whitefield, Whitehead back. I think he's going to be really, really nice to go along with Winfield. And, and they got him on a couple-year deal. On to the Carolina Panthers. Damn, my top needs for the Panthers. Tight end on offense. They, they're they going to need to upgrade here. Tommy Tremble maybe can break out here. However, I still think that you're going to need to add. You got Ian Thomas going to a contract year. Well, cuttable after this year. And then uh, you got Steven Sullivan. But anyway, yeah, tight end an area. I think they could draft over the wide receiver position even in the draft. It wouldn't shock me. It really wouldn't. Edge rusher, huge need for sure. You got DJ Woonham in here on a couple-year deal. But Kavalon Chason, Amari Barno, maybe DJ Johnson. You know, they did trade up for him, so they're probably very high on him. We'll see how that works out. But I, I'm looking at the edge position after losing Brian Burns, and it's definitely going to take a hit. Cornerback, a area they need to add that number two corner, right? You got, you got your J.C. Horn, your number one. But he's had some injury issues, of course. Dane Jackson, I mean, he was a good rotational player for the Bills. Do I feel confident he can be the guy? Maybe. E.J. Averro's defense, he'd probably get the best out of him, too. Overall, we'll see how that works out. I think he's going to get a, an, at least an opportunity. You got Troy Hill. You could at least bring some competition at that slot position for that starter spot there. So, cornerback is definitely a priority for me, bringing in at least some competition in that room. Other areas, future needs, upgrades, wide receiver, 
Now, Thielen is still in a contract next year. Deontay Johnson is a free agent. Whether they work an extension now is going to come down to how he has the chemistry with Bryce Young, how he plays. And then you've got Jonathan Mingo. And I imagine they're not ready to give up on him, a second-round pick, their top pick last year, other than Bryce Young, of course. But, yeah, I, I think that that's something where I don't know if they're going to go at it with one of those second-round picks. It just depends, I think, who falls to them. Overall, I think they have their starters in locked in at the moment. Running back, I could see this an upgrade. I know you got you you got your starters technically with Chuba and then Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders probably get released after this next season when he's more cuttable. Overall, I still feel like they could use a little bit more help. Miles Sanders maybe will play better this year, and Chuba really was their best back anyway. Center wise. Could be an option, depending on how you feel about Austin Corbett moving over to the center position. That's the only big question. I've not seen him play center at the NFL. I don't know if he had center experience back in college. That's uh, something I'd have to go back and take a look at. But nonetheless, he is going to be transitioning to center, which means that they're probably going to at least be looking to add in the draft. Whether that's a mid-round pick, who knows? It could even be a second-round pick. It's very possible with the injury concerns with Austin Corbett, who has not played many snaps over these past couple of years and for the Carolina Panthers. And then D the end, right? They need a pass rushing type. Shy Tuttle, Tuttle is a cuttable next year. You could save like seven, eight million dollars if you cut him, and it's basically very little dead cap. So that's something to keep an eye out on there. You got A. Sean Robinson. Their run defense should be really good. I will say that. Like that's a mean defense line with Derrick Brown, A. Sean Robinson, and Shy Tuttle to be a run stopping unit but they're lacking maybe that interior pass rush they're lacking the pass rush in general so they're gonna have to get creative with their blitzes but they could definitely use somebody in that situational role to get after the passer like a michael hall possibly too linebacker of the future Shaq thompson going to be a contract year for him long term Josie Jewell and, and whoever else it's going to be. Safety-wise, another area where Jordan Fuller, one-year deal, and then also Xavier Woods on going into the final year of his deal. Jamie Robinson is a developmental piece, but that could be something they look at. Areas they're good at, quarterback, I still believe in Bryce Young. I think he's going to be the franchise quarterback. Give him some time. Let's not panic. Let's not push the panic button so soon and call him a bust after one year. Really believe in Bryce Young still. Tackle, you're in good stuff. I love that they brought in Yash, Yash Nyman as a, as a backup, man. That's a great move. So Ikea Kwanu and Taylor Moton, really good. And then guard, I feel confident between, uh, you know, Lewis and Hunt. So overall, really confident there. On to the Arizona Cardinals. Here and my top needs, wide receiver, first and foremost. You got to add a number one receiver. You just need receiver help in general. I do think Michael Wilson will have a big time. I think he could have a big time year. And I think there's a lot of potential for him to become a true type of number one. I think there's potential there no doubt about it either which way you got Greg Dorch in the slot you need somebody else in here you got what Chris Moore and yeah it's it's a little thin and Zach Pascal etc any which way receiver at that number four overall pick or a, a trade down I definitely think it's possible it wouldn't shock me if Monty goes back to another trade down this year cornerback also still a big need now with that being said, if Garrett Williams does end up moving to the outside this next season, then this would be on the lower priority of the list. It would be more in that yellow range because finding a nickel slash Starling Thomas and Kachel Clark, maybe they can compete it out there. Overall, if you say, hey, we're keeping Garrett Williams in the slot, then I would say this is a bigger need because I feel a little less confident in Thomas and Cottrell Clark to be a day one starter right now. So those are that's why I'm saying cornerback, at least at this moment, with to go along with Sean Murphy Bunting on the outside. Future-wise slash upgrade areas, running back. Okay, James Conner going into last year of his deal. I would definitely be experimenting here with trying to find somebody for the future slash a good solid uh, rotation there. Left guard, also a pretty big need in my eyes. This, this was close to a top need for me because Elijah Wilkerson, like the continuity having him back, he's definitely a capable starter. I would seriously look at upgrading, though. This is one of those positions where I think that they need to really teeter and focus in on. Maybe look at a day two pick at spending at that left guard position. See if somebody falls to you at that point. Right guard's more of a future thing with Will Hernandez going into last year of his deal. Maybe he gets an extension. That's a possibility, though. Edge rusher. They've got a lot of guys. Now, they've got a lot of guys that are free agents next year. Really, the only guys you have right now under contract are B.J. Ojolari. Um, is Cameron Thomas under next year? Don't know if he is or not. But free agents, you have Saving uh, Collins. You've got Dennis Gardeck. 
Victor DiMichigi, all free agents. So that's where I'm, I'm kind of saying, hey, this they could definitely add some more pass rush. And it wouldn't shock me if an edge rusher, if they trade down and they say, hey, I'm going to go, we're going to go get Jared Burst or Aleha Tulatu. I think that's really in the cards for them. And they could find one of those receivers too with their other first rounder. So there's a lot of different options for them. But edge rusher, definitely still in play. It just kind of depends on how the board falls. I don't know if it's a high priority because they've got so many rotational players. They just don't have a true number one edge at the moment. Uh, nose tackle, still a need for them. This is not that big of a need, though. And I, they got some guys that can rotate. Obviously, bringing in Bilal Nichols and uh, Justin Jones, both guys that jo Jones will play that, like that one tag and Nichols as that three. But they could still, you know, they played a lot of five man fronts, and I expect them to do that this next season as well. So getting somebody in there, maybe long term, that can be more of a space heater, stop the run. They're going to be way better just with Justin Jones and Bilal Nichols as it is, and both are under long term or longer term deals. Linebacker could be a future need for sure. I, I think you've got your starters potentially going into this season. Owen Popo's developing as that third linebacker, and then you've got. Um, Mac Hall, or um, sorry, Mac Wilson coming over here on a two-year deal, and you have uh, still Kazir White under contract for one more season. Now he's a free agent next year, so all those realms you could say, hey, Owen Popo, we see another year out of him. That's not where I would say you go at this early in the draft, but that is something you could think about for the future there still if you don't believe in Owen Popo. However, there is some developmental upside, so that's why I think that the, that's probably more of a late pick or you'll wait and see until next year, more or less move. Safety Buda Baker, think about that for the long-term future because he is going to that final year of his deal. And Jalen Thompson getting that long-term running mate. You got Andre Sashier. more of a situational, can play in the slot, gives you versatility. He's a rotational player. There is it. They're in a good spot. Quarterback Kyler Murray still under contract. And I expect him to be back to full Kyler Murray superpower. And you also have Desmond Ritter as a backup. So hey, that's pretty cool. Tight end, good to go. You're locked and loaded there. Trey McBride falling out the season center. Froholt did a good job, man. He was a good center for them. He's still in a contract. Plus, you bring in Evan Brown. You got John Gaines for the future. So, I feel like they're in a pretty good spot there. DN slash DT, you know, DN more or less, right? I feel like they're in a good spot with Nichols coming in here on, on a, a deal. And then Justin Jones gives you some versatility. I mean, you could still look to add in that department. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. And then linebacker could be something they look at for the future, possibly, right? Because Kazir White is going to a contract year. But I see this as probably something they hold off on, mainly because they got Owen Popo. So my view on this is Mac Wilson will compete with Owen Popo for that starting job with Kazir White. And then that gives Owen Popo another season to develop and see what they have. And then you probably go into next year's draft saying, all right, how do we feel? We got a good vibe on whether or not he's going to be a starter or not. Then you kind of go on a premium pick. So that's why this is more of a, a mid-tier possible look slash maybe another late round throw at it, depending. Safety, Buda Baker going in the last year of his deal. So finding that long-term running mate with Josh Thompson could be uh, very much in the cards for them. And Andre Sashier, more of a guy who can be a good situational player playing the slot etc and then areas that they're in a really good spot or at least feel confident that they don't need to go at this early quarterback kyla murray should be at full superpower strength murray magic should i say and then you got also uh, desmond ritter coming in as the backup tight end trey mcbride balling out this year not really that big of a need maybe a backup long term elijah higgins is there center wise i feel confident with fro holt as the starting center he was good this past season and even as such you got evan brown as a backup you got john Gaines as a developmental piece so i feel pretty confident at that position defensive tackle they should be in a good spot as well bringing in below nichols bringing in justin jones you also bring in Kyrus Tunga as a nose tackle type. And then same thing with Roy Lopez, who can be an early down run defender. Overall, I don't think it's going to be a strength of this team. It won't be a weakness per se anymore, right? You got to be bringing some quality guys in a rotation. On to the Seattle Seahawks. And my top needs for the Hawks are left guard position, first and foremost. They have to fill that void. I mean, I guess you could try Nick Harris over that left guard position. Ola Watimi. Who knows? Maybe both are options. I think they need to upgrade their long term, though. Need to at least add competition. So left guard to me is a pretty big need. Linebacker also quite a big need still. Yeah, I mean, and they did a good job bringing in Jerome Baker. However, besides that, it's like Terrell Dotson, 
you know, he's a decent run defender. I think they're going to need some more help, though, no matter what. You got, like, Drake Thomas behind him and, and John Radigan maybe is he may still around as a special teamer. So they're going to need more help, for sure, in that linebacking position. Safety as well. They bring in Rashawn Jenkins. But that's that's not going to be enough, in my opinion. Especially, I imagine they're still going to run plenty of three safety looks. Julian Love, under contract for one more year. So I would imagine that this is at least takes somewhat of a precedence in the draft for them with maybe one of those third round, early fourth round picks. And then on to some other areas, wide receiver of the future, like a deep threat for Tyler Lockett. This could be his last season because you look at next year, his cap hit is quite big and they can move on from him. Tight end. Could be just a backup scenario here with no fan re-signed, but you look with Farrell Brown and, and the rest of this group, like Tyler Mabry, you need more help, more depth. And then you got Edge Rusher, which I am a I wouldn't say this is a pressing need per se. You have to hope that some of those guys that you've drafted develop more. Now Boya Mafe take a step. Let's hope Daryl Taylor can or sorry, Derek Hall will take that next step. Same thing with Daryl Taylor, who is back on a one-year deal, but that's definitely gonna be the big cue. And that's where I'm thinking it's leading into more of a first round pick next year especially if Hall doesn't take that step or if Daryl Taylor doesn't contribute enough or a chin who struggles and you move on from him because you could move on and save like eight million dollars I believe next season so those are definitely in the cards for them and impossible maneuver maneuvers but for right now I would not say this is that big of a need with those four guys in a rotation and Mike Morris can play on the edge can play on the inside too uh, on some areas that I feel pretty confident in running back first and foremost canine and sharp that's a really good running back room one of the better ones center I love the Hassani of Nick Harris I really do I thought that was an underrated signing I think he is ready to be a starter but you got Ole Oluwatimi as well so I think that they've got some good competition at that center position I mean Nick Harris is on just a one-year deal so you think about that but I think Oluwatimi is also a capable starter so between one of those guys I feel like you've got your long-term center right guard Anthony Bradford hopefully he does step up into that right guard position I'm not looking at investing major draft capital in that that'd be more or less you have the free agent to go along there tackle Good job bringing George Fannin. I feel like he's a very capable swing tackle for Abe Lucas slash Charles Gross. He's played both left and right sides. He goes back to Seattle. That was a really good signing, in my opinion. So I feel like they're in a good spot tackle-wise. Corner, really good spot as well. Reek Wolin. I know he didn't have his greatest season last year, but he's still a solid corner and, and really good. Um, you know, obviously got Devin Witherspoon. You bring back Michael Jackson. Always good to have a Michael Jackson in the room. And you got Trey Brown as well competing for that third cornerback spot. Maybe you draft a you know somebody else with you know long-term Kobe Turner etc as more depth and into your defensive line here is also pretty dang good I feel like you you bring back Leonard Big Cat Williams and then you still have some guys at the nose tackle position between Jaron Reed you got Cameron uh, Young developing in the wing you bring Jonathan Hankins in so should be solid there at least for right now don't see that as a pressing you know top four round need and then DN wise you know going along with Draymond Jones still under contract Leonard Williams of course so that's uh, I think they're okay on the interior on to the Los Angeles Rams and my top need edge rusher they really need another edge rusher in this room you got Byron Young and Michael Hoyt and, and Hoyt's not a bad player I just would like to have him as more of a rotational player they can work inside and out so looking at edge rusher at 19 is very much in play in my eyes and then you look at interior defensive line losing Aaron Donald obviously one of the best players of this generation not just defensive tackles but best players of this generation it's gonna be tough to fill obviously but I think you know with the emergence of Colby Turner I, I feel like this isn't as big of a need and, and you maybe don't have to force this in the first round Bobby Brown I think is ready to play at that nose tackle position and, and on the interior rotation you got Corey Dur Durden as well you got Dejon Johnson from Toledo as a rotational three tech five tech but yes they have to add whether that's a free agency a free agency sort of thing and a draft I think it's both so you're gonna need to add there but maybe it's, it's not a first round need because of Colby Turner and then cornerback I think they need to add some size in this room I think that's really what they're missing currently right you've got Doris Williams coming in here on a multiple year deal you have Kobe Durant you have Trey Tomlinson uh, Darian Kendrick you know again I, I don't know at this point more of a rotational player you need somebody with some size on the outside Quentin Lake in the slot can also play safety but yeah I would look at that TJ Tampa mold I love that type of fit for them in the second round if you can snag him I think that'd be a really nice one uh, some areas to look at future wise possible mid-round pick something like that wide receiver Damaris Robinson under one year contract Tutu Atwell going to last year of his deal Pensaronic so kind of think about that for the future to go along with Puga Nakua and Cooper Cup and Cup getting a little bit older now injury prone stuff like that offensive tackle 
This is one where Aldrich Jackson in on that restricted deal. So whether he got tendered, whether or not he is the long-term answer left tackle, we'll find out more about that with this season. You got Joe Noboom back as a swing tackle. And Rob Havenstein, somebody that is getting a little bit older now and also need to maybe think about the future there. So they could definitely draft the tackle and develop long-term. I definitely think that's in play. And then finally, uh, defensively, linebacker is definitely an area they're thin, right? You got Rosenboom. It's it's very thin beyond Ernest Jones. And they, and they can get away with it in this scheme, but I do think that is something that they need to add to this linebacking core still, especially Ernest Jones, a free agent next year. Safety. Quinn Lake, as I mentioned, is a slot corner. He could play safety for them and give you some more competition. But for the right now, I'm keeping him at the slot. And that leaves, you know, your camera curl locked in as one of your safety positions, uh, strong safety positions, but free safety wise. Could you look at an upgrade here? Possibly. I do think this is an area where Russ Yeast, not a bad player, but maybe you add some more competition as well. You got Jason Taylor, maybe, who knows, but definitely an area that they could still look to add. And then some areas I feel good about quarterback, Matthew Stafford, you bring in Jimmy G as a good, capable backup. You got Stenson Bennett, so overall, should be locked in. And running back, Kyron Williams, you got your starter, Zach, Zach Evans, hopefully can end up being the number two. That's still in question mark. Maybe add another power back. They're a little thin, so this would be like a day three pick for me. Tight end, Colby Parkinson and Davis Allen I thought are more than capable at this point to fill that void even if Tyler Higby doesn't play next season who knows so overall feel pretty confident with those two guys at the tight end position into your offense line looks amazing so between Dotson Jackson and, and Avila you're you're mean mug in there on the interior to the San Francisco 49ers and top needs offensive line Offensive line? Did I say offensive line? Offensive line! Into your offensive line, basically cost them the Super Bowl. Right tackle, both areas, right? Whether that's a Graham Barton that's available, JPJ, Tyler Guyton. I know they're going to love Roger Rosengarten. Just seems like a perfect fit. Keep an eye out, like second round is a possibility for them. But offensive line is a must need here. Uh, absolutely have to address that. And then we look into some of the other potential areas to look at, mid-round possibilities too. Wide receiver. I think there's a real chance that they have to move on from Debo or Brandon Ayuk after this next season. One of those two guys, whether they sign Ayuk and then let go of Debo. So don't be surprised if they spend an earlier pick on the wide receiver position than maybe what's being mock drafted at right now. It really wouldn't shock me. That's why I mock draft Lab McConkey that one time. I really think it's possible. I really do. So you never know. I also like that fit too, but I think it's probably more of a day two type of selection for them. Anyway, Juwan Johnson or Jennings is also a free agent. So you need to think about that next year because he's, you know, he is under one year that tender deal, but Jennings could be an option that if, if he doesn't quite elevate, then, you know, they could move on from him or unable to pay him if he plays really well. Edge rusher, always a need for this 49er team. You bring in some, you know, short-term deals with Leonard Floyd. Now, he's a couple-year deal, but you got Uter Gross Matos. They love their rotations. You got Drake Jackson, Nick Bosa. I, I just list it because, as I talk about it, it's something they always seem to look at relatively early in the draft. I don't think it's a huge need right now. And maybe Robert Beal can step up too. Interior defensive line, I also list here too, because thinking that they're getting a little bit older than on in that interior defense line. They traded from Lee Collins, which is fine. You got Javon Hargrave. They could even move on from him next season with their cap situation getting a little bit tight if he doesn't, you know, really elevate and play, you know, amazing. So that could be an option. And their depth's okay. You got Kevin Givens and whatnot. You got Kali Davis. So they've got some guys to rotate in on that defensive front, but they definitely could use some more help on the interior. And then linebacker, I feel like they're in a really, they're in a decent spot here. They could look at spending another mid-round pick. You bring in Devondre Campbell, which is a nice one-year sign, especially with Dre Greenlaw, may not end up playing you know, a good chunk of this season. So having him in there to go along with Fred Warner is really nice. And D. Winters is a developmental piece. Even though Campbell and also Greenlaw are both free agents in 2025, that's why I list it. So maybe the long term, it depends on how you feel about D. Winters, but it's not that big of a concern here. But I do list it there because of the free agents. Cornerback, I feel like is in a lot better shape. They brought in Isaac Yadaman, who will at least give them good depth, right? He can definitely compete inside and outside to go along in this cornerback room. If you want to keep Lenore in the slot, do what you need to do there and have some more competition with Ambry Thomas. Now, as I was saying, all these guys are free agents. Ward, Thomas, Lenore, Yada. I'm like, you got to think about that for the future. So this to me is still like a day two future type of pick. At minimum, an early day three pick. Safety, Hufunga is a free agent next year. I love that name. But anyway, he is a free agent next year. You got um, Jair Brown. 
and maybe, you know, they don't end up paying for Hufunga, depending on how much financial money they're in, stuff like that, even though Hufunga's a really good player. You got George Odom as a backup, I think Eric Harris too, so they're going to need a little bit more depth in that safety room, at least thinking about that for the future. Areas, though, they're in a really good spot. Quarterback Brock Purdy still on a cheap contract for the next two years, which is awesome. And then running back... You got one of the best in the game, you know, one of the best playmakers in the game, and Christian McCaffrey, uh, and you got Elijah Mitchell, you got uh, some good depth, too, in general. I think that they need to start giving Jordan Mason some more touches. And then finally, tight end, I think they're still in a good spot here, even losing, you know, some guys on some depth there, uh, Charlie Warner, example, uh, they should be okay. Now, I, I do think they'll spend a pick at the tight end position. Uh, somewhat in the mid rounds, but you got Cameron Leatu, you got Brandon Willis. So I think that your hope is, you know, after spending a third round pick on him and then a later round pick on Willis, so you got a little bit of depth to go along with George Kittle. That is going to do it here for the NFC team needs. And uh, I'll be getting into all the actual m team individual mock drafts here next. So we're going to get get into that. But I hope you guys have a really good day, really cooling day. My name is Shisling. I'm doing my thing. And I'll talk to you later.